Hey everyone, Gratuitous here. Welcome back to the Studio Reassemble series. So again, I was evacuated due to some forest fires in my area. My whole studio is disassembled and I wanna get my computer set up. So that's what this video is gonna be. So if you have never built your own computer, uh, we're just gonna talk about a computer for music production and what to look for. This computer was built in 2017, so it's quite old, but it's still doing very, very good for me. It's allowed me to do all my FL Studio courses as well as all my beat tapes over my years. So it's been a great computer. This is actually my second music production computer. So I built one in 2012 and we will look at that one as well. This one was built in 2017. So what I'm trying to say is computers nowadays are very, very powerful. Even the low end ones are more powerful than my computer here. Okay, and it was a pretty high end computer at the time. So again, if you are looking here and you don't know what you're looking at, so we have um, so you have a CPU, which is like the brains of your computer. This is the cooler, which cools the CPU. Ideally, you want to have a higher end CPU because it's going to last longer as well as be more powerful to do all your processing. We have RAM. That's like these little uh, uh, sticks right there. We have a video card. Okay. We have a power supply. We have a hard drive. Now this is a spinning disk hard drive, but for your operating system, you do want to have a uh, solid state hard drive. So you can see it's like this little uh, black line here. I'll zoom in here. So this is called an NVMe solid state hard drive. It just uh, plugs right into your motherboard. Okay. Oh, and also, yeah, you, you need a motherboard as well. Okay. But uh, again, I'm going to show you on my other computer as well, just to give you a reference because computers haven't changed too much in recent years. There's been some differences, but not overly much. All right, so the main things to look for in a music production computer is really the CPU. That's the most important for the performance. You actually don't need a graphics card these days because your CPU actually has a graphics card built in. And the next thing is how many USB ports do you have? So let me just break that down quickly before moving on, okay? So this computer, the CPU has its own video card. So when I plug it into my motherboard, this is off of my motherboard right here. So you can see this one up here is DisplayPort. This one down here is HDMI and this is DVI. So I can plug in three monitors off of this motherboard and the CPU. So I actually don't need a video card. And um, this one that's lit up, the MSI, that is my video card. But I use that for video editing as well as doing the courses. It takes a load off of my CPU. So you don't need uh, an actual dedicated video card is what I'm saying because the CPU nowadays has it. So for example, if you had like the 13700K or the 13900K, those have a, um, a GPU built in, but if you have the F model, those don't have a graphics card built in. So when you are purchasing a pre-built music production computer, let's say from Best Buy, a lot of times they will give you the CPU, but the F model, so the CPU does not have a video card, and they'll give you a video card, but it's always nice to have the CPU graphics card. And then if you want to have your own video card, there's that too, because you know, for example, what if the video card fails, you still have a graphics card that you, or you know, um, graphics for your monitors that you can still plug in, okay? So again, for a music production computer, besides the CPU, you wanna be thinking about how many USB ports. And over my years, um, you can see I have, couple here. Again, this is just where I've been doing like my web development for the new platform launch. Um, but what I'm trying to say is I actually ran out of USB ports. So I actually installed a USB card. Okay. So, you know, it's, it's pretty, pretty easy to install. You just purchase one off of Amazon, uh, you know, a PCI USB 3.0 card. It's the green one there and it just plugs into the slots. Again, I'll share my other old computer for you. You'll be able to see a little bit better. So USB ports, how many do you need? For example, a mouse, a keyboard, audio interface, MIDI keyboard. Are you plugging any other kind of devices in there? Like for example, I have an external hard drive. So all of these things take USB ports. So that's something that you really gotta think about for music production. Um, again, a video card, your power supply. One thing I'll tell you guys is don't cheap out on a cheap power supply because what happens is they have a fan in them and they get really they get really noisy. So a lot of times you're looking in your computer and you're wondering like, what's causing all like the noise in my computer? A lot of times it's your power supply, okay? 
And that's what happens. So a lot of times you want to purchase a bigger power supply than what you need, as well as a high end one that it doesn't like squee um, squeal or anything like that. Okay, so let's quickly look at my old music production computer and then I will assemble this and just kind of quickly break down some of the, um, you know, how I'm plugging things in and stuff. So again, this is the current state of the studio, like you saw in the last video when I was talking about power in the studio. Um, so this is my old music production computer. So this is what we're gonna look at. Now, one thing I wanna say is this power conditioner, like I talked about, a really nice feature of it is it does have a service plug. I need to install this light so that we can look in the computer a little bit better and I can just plug it right in there. So it's a workflow thing as, to, um, as well. All right, so here is my old music production computer. This was the very, very first music production computer I built for, you know, specifically music production because this is what happens when you're brand new. You find out about FL Studio, right? You start making beats, you start really enjoying it, and then what happens is you start getting better, so your projects start growing, and your current computer is not able to handle what you're throwing at it. So then you, all of a sudden you start thinking about, all right, if I wanna really pursue music production, I am going to need a custom music production computer or just you know a better computer. But when you put together your own components of a computer, you're always gonna get better bang for buck for more quality parts. Because when you purchase a pre-built music production computer, you are still getting, you know, a high-end CPU and all that stuff, but in terms of maybe like the motherboard, so the motherboard is what everything plugs into, okay? As you can see, like, you know, there's a PCI slot. And um, so in other words, we have a motherboard where everything plugs into. We have like our RAM, our CPU cooler, Okay, you can plug fans into the motherboard and you're actually able to turn up and down the fans from the software of the motherboard. A lot of times you can go into the BIOS of the motherboard. So when you purchase a music production computer, the best approach is building your own custom computer and it's really, really easy nowadays. It's not very complicated. The most important thing to understand is the motherboard and the CPU have to go together, okay? And then when it comes to RAM, there's different kind of versions. There's like DDR4, but nowadays you want to look at DDR5. It's now at a point where it's more cost effective. And uh, I'll break all this stuff down in a different series of videos when I actually build um, a computer for music production, which uh, will hopefully be educational for you guys. Now, what I want to quickly say with this music production computer, because again, this was built in 2012. So it's a very old music production computer. Um, it still runs really well and I want to be able to still use it, but this one was having problems with USB. Super intermittent, it's like always resetting. So I tried using this computer for a lot of different things. I tried it for courses upstairs on the piano and I just couldn't get it working. So this computer is now like a write off the motherboard with the USB, there's something going on. And this for every single USB port, there's something going on with this computer. So I've tried to salvage it. But anyway, so what I wanna say is you saw on the other computer how I told you that in 2017, I built the other computer. This computer was built in 2012. So some technology has improved, but what I want you to see here is on the back, what's powerful about this computer is a lot of USB ports. Okay, and at the time in 2012, I was able to get USB 3 and stuff because around this time was when USB 3 was starting to become more popular on computers. But you can see there's nowhere to plug in my computer screens, right? So if I have three computer screens, now in order to see my computer screens, you actually have to have a video card, which sometimes made it a little bit tricky if you didn't have all these ports for the monitors, okay? But nowadays, off of your CPU. So again, uh, for me personally, I like to use Intel. Intel just works. I've had a really good experience with it, okay? And for video cards, I like to use Nvidia, okay? So Intel, Nvidia. The reason is because the drivers are good and uh, for Intel, it usually always has the, uh, the fastest single thread speed. Very important for music production, which I've learned from the image line uh, post there. Okay, so how your music production computer works, or just a computer in general, is you have your motherboard and you have a CPU. And the CPU has to be, you know, has to go into the socket of the motherboard. So in other words, the CPU and the motherboard have to be the same kind of generation. 
all right? And then now for a music production computer, we are really focused on silence as well, at least for me. I like my computer being quiet, especially you know if I'm doing courses and recording with a microphone. And so in order to have a quiet computer, you wanna have a good cooler, okay? So what you're looking at right here, this is just the fan. Underneath, you can see these little metal fins, okay? If I come to the side. So this right here is your CPU cooler. And there's different types of coolers. There's like, air. this is an air cooler. There's like water coolers and stuff like that. There's also like, you know, all-in-one water cooling solutions. Like you don't have to get super intense with them. Uh, for me, I al I've always liked an air cooler. They're just more reliable because they, they, uh, the water pump ones have like a pump and that can fail, and it can also make a little bit of noise and stuff too. Um, but when it comes to a CPU cooler, you just wanna make sure you get a good one for your CPU. This cooler actually wasn't um, big enough for this CPU at the time, so uh, the fan spins up quite a bit, okay? So a good CPU cooler on your CPU for this to be quiet. You wanna have probably two fans in the front, for good airflow, okay? You wanna have your fan in the back. And one thing to mention when it comes to fans, you wanna make sure you are buying PWM fans because that allows you to control them as much as you want in your BIOS, okay? So our motherboard, when you turn on your computer, the little flash screen of the logo appears. You can hit F2 or like delete. That can take you into your BIOS and then you can adjust your fan speed. A lot of times there's also software you can install in Windows as well but in the BIOS, you can also adjust your fan speed. And I'll share that here quickly with you uh, because it's important to know. So this one right here, you can see it only has three pins. This one is really annoying to work with um, in the BIOS. So sometimes what happens is you can't make it quiet enough. If you lower the fan speed, it'll get to a point where it'll, it'll actually stop. And so these are called fan headers, and this is where you can plug in different fans of your computer. Okay, so for example, if we look right here, you can see it says uh, CHA fan one. So that's chassis. So chassis is like, you know, the chassis, the body. Uh, you know, uh, that'd be a fan that you can plug in to your computer. So again, if you're gonna be purchasing fans, make sure to get PWM fans. Sometimes they're just like a little bit more expensive, but they're so worth it. You can set your fan speed, whatever you want. Okay, and again, for music production, it's all about silence, right? So in other words, we always wanna have airflow in the computer, but if you can adjust your fan speed slower, then it can adequately kinda of cool the computer, giving you a quiet computer, and then you can adjust like the fan curve. So let's say you're exporting a video or you know, uh, you're working on your beats or something where it maybe doesn't need to be quiet at the time, you can set a fan curve to increase the fan speed to cool the CPU better at those times, but let's say you're just browsing the internet or you just want to be quiet, then Again, that's where that PWM fan can lower down the fan speed, whatever you want, and it's super quiet. Another thing to quickly mention um, is your video card. So again, this one, this computer needs a video card because the CPU doesn't have a built-in video card, okay? And so what I'm trying to say behind that is this video card, you can see it has two fans, okay? One fan spinning. So when you buy a video card, I highly recommend at least two fans on your video card, okay? One fan video cards are gonna be very, very loud and it's just gonna really bother you. So at least two fans. Now, like I mentioned on your power supply, this power supply is noisy, okay? It's a, it was a bit of a lower end uh, power supply at the time. You know, like it, it, it worked, it did good. But the thing is, um, you know, you'd have to open this up, you could change the fan, but all that kind of stuff is sketchy going into a power supply. And if the windings and stuff are all kind of squealing, this is, you know, so what I'm trying to say is make sure to get a high quality power supply and make sure to get more power than what you need so that the fan doesn't kick in as much or at least as loud, okay? Because this is actually a source of a lot of um, problems for noise in a music production computer, okay? So we have a CPU, for our, you know, the brains of the computer doing all the processing. We have a video card if you need it, okay? For music production, you really don't need a video card if your CPU has a graphics card built in, okay? So for example, for Intel, there's a 13700K. That is a, you know, good CPU. It has a graphics card built in. If it has the F at the end, it does not have a graphics card built in, which means that you will need a video card. And this particular motherboard, like I was sharing before, 
Remember, there's nowhere to plug in monitors at the top, which means that we have to have a video card, which means that all of your monitors and stuff have to have at least one of these ports if you want to take advantage of three screens. So it's not as simple as just buying components and being good to go. You have to kind of know what you have, especially if you have some dated equipment, for example, like uh, maybe sometimes your screens could be old and you're just bringing a new computer in. So these are all just kind of things you got to think about. So CPU is the brains. You might need a video card if your CPU doesn't have it, but if your CPU does have integrated graphics, such as the Intel, so let's say 13900K or the 13700K, that's a great CPU for right now. Um, you won't need a video card, so you can save a lot of money there. And if you do, you don't need a high-end video card as well. So, and, and I'm just speaking for purely music production. If you want to play video games or if you do video editing, you know, then you can look into um, a graphics card. I talked about your power supply. You just want to make sure your power supply has more power than what you need so that it's not always kicking in the fan and a higher end one won't cause you as many problems, okay? Because I, I tell you, this has caused me a lot of problems for noise that I can't control. Now, let's just quickly talk about um, RAM, okay? So RAM, um, with music production, you know, 16 gigabytes is minimum. However, I've heard people talk about with Windows 11, um, 32 gigabytes um, supposedly helps like kind of make it snappier. I don't know if I believe that, um, but if I were to build a music production computer for myself today, I would probably go 32 gigabytes of RAM just for, you know, upgrade, um, upgrading uh, safe so I don't have to like upgrade later. Uh, DDR4 was, uh, you know, popular for many, many years, but now DDR5 is out. And again, it is now at a time where it's more affordable and um, it's pretty comparable to DDR4 nowadays. And so the biggest one as well for music production is storage, because when it comes to storage, if you have a lot of files, a lot of VSTs, a lot of sounds, you know, you may still want a hard drive, right? But this one right here, before I showed you like a bubblegum stick of an SSD, this one's a SATA SSD. These are very, very good SSDs, very, very fast for the average user, even for music production, very, very fast. And thankfully now we're starting to see four terabyte SSDs at more affordable prices. Um, but again, when I tell you guys about making beats and your sounds, I always tell you that you want to have, you know, high quality tools. You don't need to have thousands of sounds and thousands of plugins, because if you do, you're going to need tons of storage. And then you have to back up that storage and solid state hard drives are not cheap. They're a little bit more expensive, right? And so it's all about understanding the tools you need so that all your files are easy to manage. Um, but anyway, so the current state still of, you know, computers for Windows is that you're, you're gonna want a solid state hard drive for your operating system like Windows, as well as your programs like FL Studio or if you do video editing. And ideally, if you could load your VSTs on a solid state hard drive, things will load much quicker, all right? And then again, um, you might need a hard drive just for all like your backups and stuff like that. So you can actually plug a hard drive in, and as you can see uh, right here, the white, that's called a SATA cable. That's how you plug these in. So you can see in the back there on the right, that's a power cable that comes from the power supply, one of those cables. It just kind of goes in the back somehow. And then the white cable on the left there, you can just kind of see it, that plugs right into here, okay? And so that is just the basics of your music production computer. So CPU, RAM, motherboard, power supply, storage, and maybe a graphics card if you do gaming and stuff like that. But for music production, your integrated graphics will do you just fine. So that's just a little rundown if you're new to all that stuff and be on the lookout for the series when I do build a music production computer. Cause what I want to do is uh, for a long time, I've been wanting to come out with what's called the Melody Minute. It's going to be teaching you guys all about piano because I've created this piano lessons for producers course. It's helped thousands of students learn how to play piano specifically as a producer. But what I'm trying to say is I wanted this to be on the, on my piano upstairs so I can do tutorials about the piano and do FL Studio training, but it was having those USB problems. So again, I tried going into the BIOS, I tried disabling the USB ports. And so this thing has just caused me so many problems. It's just an old computer and it's time to get a new one. So be on the lookout for that. I think you will really enjoy the music production computer series about how to build one, what to think about, 
And then you will also get the Melody Minute training when everything is put together. Okay, so let's actually start plugging the components in to my real computer, because this is where it's gonna go, right here, okay? And so again, I've installed my monitors with you. We've set up the power cables. I shared with you the organization of the wires in the back to kind of get them off the ground finally. You know, so a lot of times when you're new to all this stuff or, you know, you're just rushing, you're just trying to get things done quick. But this time I'm slowing it down a little bit, trying to kind of get it half decent where it's just easier to manage and uh, flow. So this is just a kitchen tile that um, from renovations, it was just in the garage. And again, it's gonna take the computer off of the carpet just for static electricity. And uh, this is a, a pedal for my sub. Allows me to turn it off, off and on. So before I actually plug in the stuff in this computer, I just wanna give one last overview of it, just to give you an idea of my experience with it so far and some things to think about, you know, like a computer case and stuff like that, okay? So um, it's nice to have a lot of USB ports in the front. The next thing I wanna say about this computer case is this one has some sound dampening material. And I personally would recommend it. Um, it makes the computer much quieter. Even on the roof here, all this is like sound dampening material, okay? So computers, computer cases for the most part are pretty cheap, but the sound dampening definitely, I think helps. So here is the sound dampening material, okay? And I, it def definitely does help, I like it. So if I were to get a new case, I would definitely recommend that. Uh, this one's by Fractal Design, but again, computer parts, you know, they change so much over the years. This was built in 2017, so you can figure out, uh, you know, what brand you want, but there you go. I've enjoyed my case. So if I open this up, you can see that there's two fans, which I can control in the BIOS or in the software just to control the fan speed. And there's also usually a filter on the bottom of these uh, cases as well. So again, this motherboard allows me to plug in my monitors. So in the case of monitor one, monitor two, monitor three, I'm gonna be using one display port, one HDMI, and then one HDMI, because that's how it works. That only has HDMI, that only has HDMI, that one does have DisplayPort. So in terms of my video card, okay, I have DisplayPort, DisplayPort, HDMI, DisplayPort, and then thankfully my CPU has a graphics card which comes in handy and I can plug in my third monitor uh, up here. When I purchased this, I was thinking about USB ports, but computers nowadays might give you a couple more USB ports. But if you do need more USB ports, uh, again, you can just install a USB card so that you get more USB ports. So again, we have our CPU. You can see this CPU is much bigger than this one. So you can kind of see that on this old one, but this one's pretty thin. I've been really happy with this. Um, my recommendation is to get the two fans on the CPU. So this one came later, I purchased it after, and I couldn't find the uh, clips to get it in, so I just tied after them. And it works, it works good. It definitely gives me a couple degrees cooler, which is good just for a quieter computer. But again, you know, to install like these different cards, again, they'll just look in there. So these are just called PCI slots, and you simply just take off a screw, and you just pop it in, and then you turn on your computer, and then sometimes there's an a driver that automatically installs or you might have to go and download it. One other thing just to quickly say about your power supply is the higher end ones are often modular. So I'm actually able to remove some of these cables just to give a little bit of a cleaner look in the computer. Also, one thing I wanna share that I've learned in recent years, so your, your, uh, your top PCI slot is your best, okay? It's like your most fastest. So typically you do wanna install your video card up there. If you install it on a lower one like I have done, it gives you a little bit of a little bit of a performance hit, but just the way how my cards lined up and stuff, I just went this way and um, I still get enough for what I need for, you know, for using this video card. It's not a very high-end video card. Um, it just allows me just to do what I need it to do, okay? And that's really the goal of what you need behind a computer. You don't need the best. You just, you just need a computer that works for what you need and doesn't hold you back. And so up here, I just kind of uh, Velcroed some, uh, this is a media card reader. So when I do videos and stuff, I can just simply put a card in here and it's nice and, nice and hidden. And I actually installed a hook. So I will just wrap this cable around a couple times and that makes it nice and easy to go into a USB port. And so it just looks like that. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is plug in these monitors, okay? 
Again, I already have my cables laid out. And what's really awesome is like I shared in another video, I have this little power bar on my desk that I plug my monitors into. It just makes it really, really easy. This time around, I actually plugged in my audio interface into that. So my particular audio interface requires USB to connect to the computer, but there's also power for my audio interface as well. Okay, so power is nice and easy, nice and close. And then I'm just going to plug in my HDMI display ports and I'm going to run those down. And one nice thing about these uh, monitor arms is a lot of times they do have like cable management things. These ones are kind of cheap, but they work. And one thing I just want to share with you was this bottom monitor. The uh, HDMI, or like the, the cables were kind of coming down and I don't like that. You can kind of see it's like that. So for the MIDI keyboard, that's going to hit it. A couple years back, I purchased these HDMI connectors. These are like 90s. I'm thinking that either this one is going to do it for me or I can plug it in like this and then come out on the 90. So in other words, it would plug in and then the cable would be hidden behind the monitor right here. And then um, it might look a little messy, but I don't, again, I don't really don't care if it's too messy back here, just as long as the wires are off the ground. And it's really easy to unplug stuff and remove stuff if I need to, okay? So again, I have my hooks. Again, the goal for me isn't a super clean setup. The goal for me is just to get like the cables off of the ground, easy for like vacuuming and cleaning and um, just being able to work in comfort. That's pretty much the biggest thing for me. Are you looking for an easy way to learn how to actually make beats with FL Studio? Check out my FL Studio beginners book. Just go to itsgratuitous.com forward slash beginner.